Good morning. Thank you all for coming, and welcome to the Life Air Press Conference. My name is Eric Marsh, and I am the Director of Business Development and Sales for Life Air Systems. This morning, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Dr. Catherine Warlow, founder and CEO of Life Air Systems. She is going to share with you today some exciting new data regarding the use of the Life Air System. But prior to her introduction, I must make the following disclaimer required by the Society for Reproductive Technologies. So please bear with me. Representatives of the media, because our data is being presented for the first time in this morning's session, environment and reprodu reproduction at 11.45 a.m., we must ask you to hold the data from this press conference until the end of the oral presentation or 1 p.m. today. Now back to Dr. Warlow's introduction. Over the past year, I've had the fortunate opportunity to work hand in hand with Dr. Warlow. And I must tell you that the experience and credentials that I am about to read to you will not bring to light her most important attributes. Dr. Warlow is not only extremely intelligent, she holds the characteristics of only a select few who can channel that intelligence into success. She's driven, charismatic, articulate, and compassionate. But most importantly, she has a burning passion to improve patient care. Put simply, she has the proverbial it factor that will positively change couples' lives throughout the world. Now, in terms of her education and experience, Dr. Warlow has received her doctorate in anatomy and cell physiology from the University of Virginia School of Medicine and completed her postdoctoral post fellowship in reproductive physiology and infertility at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. She has served as the scientific director of in vitro fertilization programs for over 20 years and has performed extensive work specific to molecular signaling between the sperm and oocyte, the contribution of the paternal genome to the embryo, and the impact of ambient air on successful human embryogenesis and pre-implantation toxicology. Her work with that of her colleagues led to the development and design of the Life Air Systems patented air purification technology, Air IVF. The Air IVF system delivers the most pristine air quality available for IVF environments through an induct system by inactivating biologicals and eliminating embryotoxic volatile organic compounds using a revolutionary and proprietary air purification technology. One of the most unique features of the Life Air system is the extensive data supporting the design, specifically towards the support of the human embryo and the results from nearly four years of clinical use. Dr. Warlow and the entire Life Air team are dedicated to improving patient care. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce you this morning, Dr. Katie Warlow. Thank you, Eric, and welcome to each of you. Again, because the data is being presented for the first time in this morning's session at 1145, we kindly ask you to hold the data that we'll discuss this morning until the end of the oral session or until 1 o'clock this afternoon. We appreciate your help with that. Now, I'd like to begin by framing the problem, the challenge the challenge that ultimately led to the solution. I cannot tell you how both overwhelmed and absolutely thrilled that we are with the data that our colleagues have so kindly shared with us, with the impact of a revolutionary and solutions-oriented technology on a, towards improved patient care. So to begin, I'd like you to picture this scene, a scene involving a young couple a couple going through infertility, so wanting to have a family together, a child. They have hope. They watch their brothers and sisters' children play at the family gathering at Christmas. 
They watch their neighbor's children laugh and giggle at the playground. They see every baby within eyesight. They have longed to have a child, a family together. They've tried for years. They've seen countless specialists, physicians, and today they have yet another consultation towards yet another in vitro fertilization cycle. They ask a logical question. They ask you, the provider. They ask me about our clinical pregnancy rates. I answer and share that our current clinical pregnancy rate is approximately 50%. But by the time they cycle and actually have their IVF procedure, possibly months later, our success rate drops to 16%, an overwhelming drop in what seems to be overnight. The problem, the challenge, is not knowing the cause of such a decline in your outcomes. It is unbelievably frustrating and unforgiving to me, to our team, to our colleagues, to any team of IVF providers. What would cause such a rapid decline? In IVF, there are countless variables that can impact successful outcomes, but one that we couldn't even see would prove to be a variable extraordinarily difficult to control. The variable, air, ambient air. The air that surrounded our in vitro culture process. The air that bathed our embryos that are cultured for up to seven days outside the body the air that surrounds everything that we do in IVF. So why is air such an impactful variable? The human embryo has no mechanisms of defense, no means of protection against airborne chemical or biological pathogens. It is completely at the mercy of its environment. So after nearly 15 years of research, we learned that subtle levels of chemical and biological airborne pathogens impacted the successful growth of the human embryo. It impacted our clinical outcomes, clinical pregnancy rates. We learned that it was an infinitely small or low level of pathogens that could actually exert a negative effect on the human embryo. Parts per billion. So let me put this into perspective. If you're able to smell anything in this room this morning, that's parts per million. So to, to add another layer of perspective, think of the numbers 2 into 22 and 1 into 660,000. Parts per million is if I were to take two drops of water and place them into a child's pool, 22 gallons. Parts per billion is taking one drop of water and adding it to an Olympic-size swimming pool. It is this level that we're describing parts per billion VOCs and low levels of biologicals that impact the success of our in vitro culture environment. The source of these pathogens, the source is both dynamic and from a multitude of unavoidable, unpredictable, and very common events. Construction, the resurfacing of area roads, exhaust, neighboring restaurants, and actually within the IVF laboratory itself, thousands of chemical and biological pathogens are produced by virtue of the procedures that we perform. It's unavoidable. So the sources are both numerous and common to everyday occurrences. With so many sources of airborne pathogens and having learned how potentially devastating these can be to our process, to our clinical outcomes, and realizing that there was nothing commercially available to offer a solution, we were determined to develop a solution. We pulled together the finest chemists, chemical engineers, physicists, clean room engineers, and knowing, having learned the environment that the human embryo requires for successful development, we worked backwards. We worked backwards to design a solution yet one that did not produce byproducts, byproducts that could even be more harmful to the embryo. We now have that solution, designed specifically for the human embryo. The solution 
an aggressive and comprehensive air purification system, air IVF, or the life air system, which removes and finally controls the variable of air so that no matter what is happening outside the IVF environment, or frankly within the laboratory, the embryos are protected. The Life Air Systems technology has been recently launched and is now installed in leading IVF programs throughout the United States. The results have been overwhelming, some of which will be shared with our colleagues this morning. By using best practice, and by removing the variable of air from their process, the programs using our technology and system have experienced a dramatic increase in their clinical outcomes, in their clinical pregnancy rates. In fact, across many measures of clinical outcomes. This is the data that will be shared in our oral presentation this morning. So if you were to walk through these clinical outcomes in a progressive physiological means, the implantation rate or the ability of a single embryo, or the percentage potential of a single embryo to form, um, to implant in the uterine lining before the life air system, before complete control of the variable of air was 28.4%. After comprehensive control of their air quality and installation of the life air system, there was a statistically significant increase from these programs using the life air system rising to 42%. Moving along in clinical pregnancy rate or the presence of an intrauterine gestational sac, there was a, again a statistically significant increase from 56 to 67%. This includes all maternal ages. Continuing along the physiological line, ongoing pregnancy rate or the presence of a fetal heartbeat. 39% increasing to 53.5%, again a statistically significant increase. And finally, loss rate or miscarriage rate. Prior to the use of the life air system, the programs using a variety of air purification systems demonstrated a 32% loss rate after the life air system and comprehensive control, 20.6, again statistical significance. Now, each of these measures represent critical steps towards a live birth for these patients, towards an increased level of patient care that can be offered. The years of research, the unending and continual collection of data, the clarification of the problem, the challenge, all led to the design of a solution. All of this was driven by one thing, and one thing only, our couples, our patients, and wanting to offer them our very best, wanting to offer them a new tomorrow. Thank you. The following questions were presented to Dr. Warlow following the press conference. How do you know that it was the comprehensive control of error that made the difference in clinical outcomes? The data that's going to be presented this morning involved uh, a number of programs using the life air system. And to be honest, they all do IVF differently. But the one thing they have in common is the fact they remove the variable of air from their process. They have complete control. And the air testing before and after proves that. How quickly will an IVF program realize the improvements in clinical outcomes? Assuming best practice, fairly immediately. Is there a role for life air systems technology in hospitals and towards the reduction of hospital-acquired infections, such as MRSA, C. diff, and others? Yes, the system was modeled mathematically and genomically to, to destroy anthrax, which is your single most difficult biological to kill. So its ability to kill, its proven ability to kill anthrax, provides a nine log reduction towards all other airborne biologicals, including C. diff, MRSA, staph, strep, pseudomonas. There seems to be a lot of conversation around the possibility of Ebola being airborne. What are your thoughts on this topic, and will the life air system kill Ebola? There has been data uh, where Ebola was spread um, via airborne transmission in the laboratory, in research settings. It has not been shown outside of that. Um, 
concern of mutation of the virus could allow it to become airborne. It is spread, they do know, by droplets, by sneezing. Yes, sneezing and coughing, as well, obviously, surface. Uh, and the virus living for several hours on the surfaces. Is the data that you have presented and that will be released from more than one IVF program? No. There were three IVF programs, 1,600, over 1,600 cycles, over 12,000 embryos. Were the IVF programs of equal quality relative to best practice? I would say these three were fairly, these are, are very good IVF programs. They've been, they were very consistent prior, pre-installation and after. Are the IVF programs seeing an increase in the efficiency of a single IVF cycle? Yes. So what, what they've shared with us is an increased efficiency of a single, of one IVF cycle, um, returning fewer embryos, um, increased cryo, you know, those embryos that are frozen for future use. So the efficiency of the cycle is increased and uh, increased number of day five transfers, single embryo transfers. Are you in other healthcare environments at this time? We're in active discussions with leading hospitals, um, uh, primarily in the greater Philadelphia area, in the Lehigh Valley area. Uh, but we're talking with them about installation of the life care system to protect their OR and uh, improve uh, the level of air quality thus impact reducing the level of secondary infections. Uh, we've spoken with hospitals about installation within to protect their NICU, their PICU, OR, a burn center, uh, sterile compounding in their pharmacy. What, if any, is the variability in increased success from program to program? We wore our biostatisticians out, I believe. I think they're glad that we're here now and giving them a few days break because I wanted the numbers analyzed, to your point, per program, and then combined. Yes, yes, and we also want to look for outliers. I mean, and so the individual programs each stall statistical increase, a statistically significant increase, um, as well as the pooled data. But they, they were fairly, there was no outlier. They were fairly consistent with what they saw. And again, I mean, it was fascinating, despite None of them do IVF the same way, as it should be. Do you have air quality data from the labs that have the life air system installed? Yes, yes. And some of the programs are retrofits, so they did, they did nothing but install the life air system. Others were expanded programs, some new. Um, and doing air testing before and after showed um, what their air had been with, with a number of air filtration mechanisms and then after the life air system.